<laughs> Wait for the red light. <laughs> okay. So okay. Um, welcome. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, so, you know, I um, I think that um, we've got a really good group of people. I, what I would suggest is that you all mute yourself. And so that unless you want to, um, you know, ask a question and there'd be lots and lots of opportunities to do that and also opportunities to share. But what happens is that you get a lot of background noise. And um, so I appreciate, I appreciate that. And um, so we're muting ourselves, Eleanor, when you- um, Oh, okay. I um, lost myself. Yeah. <laughs> And we've lost Sharon's face. Um, I so know, I what, lost we're do, what we're going to do <laughs> tonight or is um, Lynn is going to lead off with a um, sort of an overview of the finances and how committees need to um, work with them and things that committees um, would like to know about finances. And then we're going to do a um, sort of a roundabout with the various committees, just as Jim said, just a couple of minutes to um, let us know what's going on. You know, we're, we're all far apart in, uh, in this COVID world and um, we wanna take this opportunity. Normally we'd be meeting at Cedar Hill and all chatting and, you know, having a go around, but we're not doing that. And um, so when you, when you, um, your turn comes, if you have something that you'd like to share about your committee, we would really appreciate it just for a couple of minutes though. And so go ahead, Lynn, thank you very much wherever you are, there you are. Well, hi everybody. Uh, the chance that you haven't read the handout that was available. Uh, the first question I was asked to expound upon was how do you make a budget as a community, as a committee chair? And I had a sort of a three-step method. And the first one was think about what you're doing yourself. How does your committee contribute to the mission of the church? And what resources like budgetary allocations or grants have been available to your committee in the past? Um, from that, list the recurring tasks that just naturally flow from the nature of your committee. If you're on stewardship, you know you're going to conduct a stewardship campaign that's going to involve some mailings, for example. All right, that's a task that's got to be done almost no matter what else. But if it's a task that you don't need anymore, then ditch it, forget about it. There's no need to continue to do things just out of tradition, okay? Um, then estimate the costs for the coming year. And we don't do a very good job of that. Of course, lots of companies don't do a very good job of that either. Um, I'm sort of responsible for postage and I don't think I conveyed to anybody guys, the postage rate has increased by 10%. So there I am, <laughs> guilty. Uh, if, the, if you're going to do something that's going to take many years, think about what those costs are going to be as well. But really, we're talking about the operating budget. So this is the one-year time horizon plan. You can get information about what you've done, your committee has done in the past uh, either your committee records show it, or you can ask me, Amy Hamilton, or Carl Schweitzer um, for that information. We know how to manipulate it and get it out of uh, QuickBooks online pretty easily, and we can get it to you that way. Third step is to submit this list of activities and estimated costs to the finance committee chair. I think that's Nancy Langren and the treasurer. I know that's Carl Schweitzer uh, as early as you can. Certainly no later than, and I, this is my speaking and I regret speaking for anybody else. Uh, no later than the annual um, program meeting, not the financial meeting, but the program meeting in late May. That gives those people time to think about it, talk about it, and construct a realistic budget for the coming year. And that's the budget story. <laughs> now, of course, once you've got a budget, you want to know, how will I get paid? What's the best way to get paid? And that's the second part of my um, talk tonight. Before you spend anything, check with the church administrator. That's Lenore. 
Then can I ask you a question? Do you want to see if anybody has any questions about that first part first? Uh, it's fine. I'm, I'll am i sit back and let Jim <laughs> monitor the screen for who's got yeah, their hand. Yeah, let me look at the... Let me, who wants to unmute mind. themselves and just shout out? Do I see a hand? Uh, any question? Uh, okay, it looks like Ted had a question uh, and you're live. So why don't you ask it, Ted? Um, <clears throat> in general, um, a lot of the... Um, money that the technol system technology asks for comes from either mostly from grants or it's direct indirectly coming from uh, operating other operating funds like the subscriptions to various software. Is that something we should leave in that pool or should I be pulling that into those types of things into the systems and technology budget? Well, that's a good question. Uh, because for one, I don't know that there is a systems and technology budget. I know you got a task force, but I don't think you got a budget. I think you got to go to the, the the board for grants for that, unless the board thinks it's a good idea to start a systems and technology budget. If I were you, I would not worry about things like QuickBooks software, GoDaddy gets the, our, that's our website domain people, they get in there automatically. Uh, Microsoft is good for about $100 from us every year. And that's, that's a bargain. Um, Church DB costs another $700 a year. I don't think that you should worry about that. I, <laughs> the big ones are accounting software and Amy and I rely on those and, and Carl and, and through the church, everybody else. Um, so that that's my thing. But if you're going to add a new program, Zoom, for example, was a new program. We now know that that is a program. And you ought to tell somebody what you think the Zoom costs are going to be in the coming year and why they're going to be that. Because uh, although I know because I just sent you a check for <laughs> three months worth of our current usage, who knows what the future is going to be better than you would, or who can make a better guess than you can. Okay, new cat, I see in the chat from Ted Lillis, what about capital expenses like a new computer? Um, that is a capital expenditure, so it doesn't go on any operating budget. Uh, you've got to look for the funding from the endowment. And there is a specific fund that is designed for things about the size of a new computer. Um, you know, under $3,000, but probably more than two or $300. And that's the memorial fund. Um, you can get in touch with the trustees. Whoa, that's me again, uh, to find out what the balance in that fund might be. And you also ought to let the finance committee chair know that we think we need a new computer. You know, you think you need a new computer and they'll probably help you as well in finding funding for it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Does anybody have questions. questions? Thought I saw Tracy's hand going. No. Nope. I was just disagreeing. I think it should be part of the budget. It's onerous for volunteers to have to write for grants for things that are predictable and part of doing business. Just complaining. The usual. Uh, that's that's a that, that's a very good. I can insight. see Ted smiling. It's just a pain in the butt if you're doing communications or <laughs> IT to not have the money. You know, you have. It's just it's onerous. Right. I, I can see the reasoning behind that. And if the board thinks they ought to add a line for information technology slash communications and put it in the operating budget, uh, just say so. That's yes, pretty, I, that's I just pretty easy to do. We, we, Ted we, and we, I want a line item. Okay, hold, hold on now. Just a second. I, yes. I, hear, I hear you guys loud and clear. I also understand that if we put it into the operating budget, we're going to need to fund it by right. an increase in pledges. And that's my concern. But before we get too deep into that discussion, does anybody from any other uh, committee have, have a question? Um, 
I, I do want to also mention that at the October meeting, I distributed the, the budget that we all got at the um, financial meeting. So if you're wondering as an individual committee where, you know, how much money you have, that's, that's where you find that. Um, if I see another hand, we'll go to Lynn. Uh, well, uh, if I don't see another hand, we'll go to Lynn. I <laughs> think we're good. So Lynn, part I two. Had, I thought Julie had a question on her. Um, on okay. Her All right, Julie, I'm going to ask you to unmute then. Okay. I just put in a chat in there. Just simple. We're not up and operating with the fellowship committee yet, but I would just want to see where that budget could be found. So I can see if it's part of our budget to pay for half and half and coffee and that kind of stuff. That's it. In the committee section, um, which is listed as so first administration and building okay. maintenance, then committees come next. Then you're the that right now the third committee down called hospitality and fellowship number seven line item number seven seven zero. And. And Lynn, that was sent with this email for this meeting? We didn't send it for oh. this meeting. We sent it for the previous meeting. So at the beginning of the year, you got an email from me. I'll, I'll re, we'll resend that That'd be awesome. so that you have Thank the budget. You. Thanks. All right. So I'll take that as an action. Uh, let me see. I see Eleanor. Um, I'm going to ask you to unmute. <laughs> um, just a question also, are you sending that to everybody? I, I think Mark and I would like that too. Uh, every did you get the email from Cindy uh, late last night? Oh yeah. Okay, it'll go to that list. Okay, great. Yep. Okay, you Good. wanna? Uh, I don't see any other hands. So, Lynn, you wanna pick up with that? Okay. So <clears throat> now that you have the authorization to spend, and you're ready to go spend, how do you do it? Well, before you spend anything. Please check with the church administrator, that's Lenore, to see if the church has a preferred supplier. Preferred suppliers offer us things like credit terms, discounts, and they already know that we are tax exempt. So that way you wouldn't have to pay out of your own pocket. For example, if you want printing done that can't be done in-house, we go to WePrint today in Kingston. It's very convenient, it's down by the, where the trains are. And uh, they know we exist and they'll send it, they'll print it for you. You won't have to pay for it, but you'll get a receipt. Please put that in the treasurer's box and we'll see, see that it got paid. Please indicate, okay? So that's an example of that. Uh, particularly for sales tax, again, we have the, the tax exempt certificate if you're going to go to a new vendor who doesn't use it. If we pay any individuals, that is non-corporated businesses, more than $600 a year, we have to file tax paperwork, call it 1099. We need their tax ID number uh, on an IRS form W9, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, if you need it, ask me, okay? Now, if you know the cost in advance, you can let me know, the assistant treasurer outgo, which is what I call myself, or the paymaster when I'm really feeling powerful. Uh, one week in advance, I can prepare your check. I can do it on even much shorter notice in general because right now I'm retired and with COVID, I ain't going anywhere either. Um, you need to provide for me the payee who are we paying? What's their address? Where are they? Um, the date that you need the check by and the amount to be paid and the budget line or the approved grant that I can charge so that I don't just go pay your clothing bill at Gucci's or something, I don't know. Uh, if you've got a bill or a contract to support that expenditure, let me know. Um, I can, if you will email it to me at lmarples at yahoo.com, that's in the directory in case you didn't get it. Um, I can de decode and detect all, all that information. So you don't have to, in this COVID era, visit the church to drop it off or you don't have to come to my house for anything. It's not a problem. But if you've already incurred the cost, 
um, you should submit an invoice or a receipt to me as well as that information above who, how much, where the money's coming from. And it should clearly indicate what the church got for the payment. In other words, it got 25 circulars in full color of eight by tens for the welcoming congregation, let's say. Who knows? Okay. Uh, in normal times, you would put all that documentation in the treasurer's church mailbox, but you know that's that's just not a good idea these days. So my email address, lmarples at yahoo.com. Questions? All right. Do I see any hands? I don't think I have absolutely everybody on my screen. Uh, put a note in the chat if you're not being heard, but I think... Lynn, do you have another section then? Nope, that's it. All right, excellent. Well, thank you very much. That's that's good. I will make a point of sending the, the budget around so that everybody has that um, in hand because that's the main question, how much, um, how much do I have? And part of the question sometimes is how much do I have left? Which as a chair, you may well, you know, presumably as the chair, you will know what's been spent but the, um, the assistant treasurers can help you find that if you uh, do not have that information or are wondering because sometimes you submit a check, but maybe if the treasurer doesn't know where to, you know, what budget to assign it to because that wasn't told to them, you know, it may still be a bit of a mystery. Anyway, any last comments, Lynn, or are we good? Uh, you're good. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to, um, Mary, I, I'd like to ask you to unmute because you said that you had something you wanted to tell folks about um, the policies and procedures manual. Right. Well, um, hi everybody. Um, Governing board has as one of its goals this year to create a policies and procedures manual. And um, you might be wondering, oh my goodness, why would that be? Well, um, if policies and procedures are written down, it really provides stability and consistency and really safety also to staff and volunteers and church members. So um, policies are uh, voted on by the uh, bo governing board um, with input from the affected committees and procedures are not necessarily voted on. They aren't voted on typically by the governing board, but that's how your committee typically does things. Um, so it provides some institutional memory for one thing, if someone dies, leaves the church, whatever, all that information doesn't just disappear. It's important for us to have it. And um, so it's a big job, hasn't been done for many years. Um, we're starting on it and some people have been so responsive. I'm just like, um, and it's so excited. And I just wanna call out John Lehman, thank you so much. <laughs> so I've already co corresponded with him and he's provided um, a lot of really good material, but how does it affect you and your committee? You will be hearing from me because I'm the person that got tasked with just assembling all this stuff. And so what I will be asking you is, are you aware of any voted on policies that your committee has? If so, just send them to me. Um, any information like when was it voted, that would be very helpful. Um, and um, then I will also be asking what procedures does your committee use that would be important for other people to, to know? And, um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to figure it. Oh my gosh, this is the way we always do it, but we just haven't written it down. So this, this is the time to write it down. You'll be hearing from me. Uh, if you have any questions when you do hear from me, just let me know. That's it. All right, Mary, thank you very much. I'm just gonna go to gallery view for a moment to see if anybody has any questions about policies and procedures for Mary. I'm not seeing any hands. So I think we're good, but just keep in mind that if, you know, I think some committees are more likely to have them than others. For example, I'm sure RE has probably five times as many as, as most other community uh, uh, committees. Um, so 
uh, certainly keep that in mind. And I'm sure Buildings and Grounds and others are, are big with what they do with contractors and stuff like that. So anyway, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna move on to the next part of our meeting, which is this check-in. And to start that, what I wanna do is to share my screen and let's see if I can get this to work here. Um, are you folks, uh, let me see, just by, can you raise your hand if you're seeing the uh, committee chair uh, and governing board member? Okay, so you're seeing that, that's great. So this is the chart that went out with the email and basically it's just the structure of the church. We worked on this to make sure it was as accurate as possible. Uh, I'm sure there's still mistakes in there. So uh, if you see something, uh, let us know either by email or in the chat or whatever, and we'll get that fixed. But what we're gonna do next is use this as the structure for the discussion. And I'm just gonna move left to right. And what we've got on the left-hand side here, and let me just move this up a little bit are the various liaisons starting with Lester Lloyd and physical plan. So what I intend to do is just go down the list here and say, uh, all right, um, buildings and grounds, you're next. Building use, office systems, historical, and so on down the line. So I've got a, a hard copy of that in front of me that I'll be referring to, but I'm gonna stop sharing there and then see, I believe I saw Susan, right? Where's Susan? Maybe wave your hand so I can see. Oh, there you are. I'm going to ask you to unmute. And why don't you give us a concise two minutes on the, um, the status of buildings and grounds? Um, well, let's see. The parlor is finished, the, except for furniture, which does not have anything to do with us. The uh, knob and tube in on the north wall of the sanctuary is completed. And it turns out that it was so neatly done that we didn't have to do any painting. So we came in under the requested amount, which could have involved painting the whole wall. We didn't have to paint anything. It was all the, um, the holes were right behind the sconces. The only thing that could not be done without spending a lot of money was changing the um, light um, turner off and on her uh, for the sconces. And I would be driving by the church late at night and see that the sconces were on because whoever had tried to turn them off didn't know how to do it. So, um, rather than spending hundreds of dollars to put in new switches and thread wiring all through the basement, um, I'm going to put labels on the, to explain how to do it so that nobody calls me in the middle of the night and asks me how to turn them off. Excellent. Well, congratulations on the parlor work. That is a big project. And Thank the you. Front, the front of the church has been half, all the horizontal boards have been half um, taken out Replay the uh, rusty screws from 1841 have been replaced with nice brand shiny new screws and painted over and the doors have been painted repainted um, but in the spring um, the Mason Cook is coming back he's going to have to rent staging because his staging doesn't go up high enough and the second half will be repaired then um, let's see. I understand that the um, air conditioning of the parlor is still receiving bids. You're saying the consulting work for that or? I, I think the consulting pretty much has been done. Mm -hmm. Lester could be more definitive than I. Um, it's just a matter of hanging the units on the wall instead of having a wired in system. I don't really totally understand it, but um, I think we're at the point of figuring out if there's enough money to, to do that. Um, the ventilation of the attic over the sanctuary is on indefinite it's indefinitely kaputted um, because it would cost around $26,000 to do that. 
but we can maybe uh, make the situation better by adding some small fans that don't make any noise. Um, I found someone to make cushions, uh, but the main cost actually will be purchasing the fabric, which all has to be done at the same time. And that's going to be in the budget for next, that we file in May, the cost of that. And we're going to have a walk around at our next meeting in February, first Wednesday morning of February to see what else needs to be repaired. We've had a problem with hanging and falling down um, the pipes that reach up to the, what are they across the top? Hey Susan, we don't, we don't we don't need every everything. We're trying okay, to give well, everybody. That's, in, it. that's those, it. Those are the big things, and you've talked about some really really big things. So well, uh, one is redoing the. Uh, uh, we have to replace the hedge in the back, which is going to be expensive, and we need a new uh, parking lot, parking entrance. It's beyond the point of just patching. You mean the pavement there. The pavement, so that's going to right. be expensive. Yep. Well, that's something I'm sure that the um, the folks in the capital planning group will be be thinking right. about significantly. Right. So I'm I'm looking next for building use, and I think I see John here somewhere. But John or Sharon, um, John, you want to do that? I'm going to ask you to unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? I gotcha. Okay, uh, building use has been a little odd in the past year. Uh, uh, our, our regular tenants are on hiatus because of uh, COVID. So we haven't had uh, much activity or, or management to do in that area. Of course, we haven't had the revenue coming in either. So, but uh, the financial people know about that. Uh, <clears throat> What we have had uh, is some, uh, some uh, attention that we've had to pay uh, to things like uh, getting a disinfecting unit, which we you know, worked with safe congregations on that. And we're working with the janitors to make sure they know how to use it and that sort of thing. Um, we also, uh, I will mention we have a little bit of activity that has uh, arisen about the cell antennas, um, <clears throat> which is part of our purview now. We've heard from AT&T that they would like to renegotiate their lease with us because they, of course, that they'd like to reduce their cost. Wouldn't, wouldn't everyone. Um, that lease, uh, uh, doesn't expire uh, for another 12 years, but they're realizing they're looking at paying out a lot of money that they'd rather not. So we're just at the beginning of, of uh, entertaining a proposal from them. My experience with this is that they'll ask for a lot and they'll probably settle for a little and we'll be happy to give them a little bit of relief uh, in order to keep them as a tenant. I've been a little concerned with the new cell tower that's going up over on Washington Street that Verizon is putting up, uh, but we haven't heard from any of our people that they're thinking of leaving. And I, I doubt that people will leave us, uh, but uh, that's, that's a consideration. We'll be a little flexible because of that. We also had an inquiry from <clears throat> the DISH uh, 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 network, um, they would like to have um, antenna space in our steeple and we don't have any additional space to give them at this point. So uh, we've told them basically at the moment we're full, uh, things may change, we don't know, uh, feel free to ask us later. Um, of course, there was the merger with uh, T-Mobile and Sprint, and we have no idea how that's going to affect us. My guess is that T-Mobile will continue uh, using the uh, equipment that Sprint had installed there um, because they're two systems which they now both 
they're providing service on both of them, they're not compatible. So they can't just uh, run it all through the T-Mobile uh, antennas. So that is taking uh, some attention right now. Uh, that's about all that I can think of uh, that uh, is of interest. Excellent. John, I see you're also on office systems, you and Ted. Do you want to give us a brief uh, take on office systems? Uh, I think Ted would be better to do that. Okay. Uh, Ted, you want to unmute yourself and I'll find you? No, I think, I think John would be better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so real quickly, uh, the, the activities of the Systems Technology Committee for the bulk of the year has been focused on uh, the trans... Uh, transmogrification of our in-person services to uh, uh, virtual services. Uh, and that's running reasonably smoothly. Uh, we also um, uh, moved from having an account that was owned and paid for by Catherine for Zoom to an account, uh, two accounts in fact that are owned by, or two seats that are owned by the church. Um, and one thing that's outstanding is uh, preparing a message for all committee chairs, now that you're here, that there is a Zoom license available for holding your committee meetings. And if you need access to that, please send me an email and I will tell you what to do. Because uh, I don't want to send out an email or um, with, with user credentials and that kind of thing. So contact me directly. Um, my email address is on the uh, the the committee chair chart, and I will uh, let you know how to make use of uh, the Zoom seat for your committee's meetings. Um, the other biggest thing, and 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 really most of the 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 techno technology behind the scenes work is being by, done by Dustin Fleming. So he's doing a great job and he's also posting the videos from those services onto YouTube. The, the other big item uh, is that we have a new copier and I props go out to John Lehman and to Lynn Marples and also to Lenore for making that happen. Um, it was installed beginning of last week and it's running and it is a lot smarter about printing in color. So we are really pleased about that. So if, what we ran into a problem last year, we had a surprise uh, copier bill uh, because if you had printed a document, had one page in color, all the pages in that document were considered color. So now it's smart enough, at least from Word and Adobe Acrobat, that if you have a five page document, one page is color, it counts one color or black and white. So that will help us uh, maintain costs. Yes, and John. Some, something else that we should mention there, the, the contract cost on the new copier is substantially less than the previous one. Previously, we were spending about $400 a month on co the copier, and now it's $250. So that $150 a month savings is going to be, you know, something to be, to be happy with, and the finance people should note that. Again, props to John for doing that legwork to, to get that deal for us. That's it. All right, Ted, thank you very much. Uh, the next under the um, physical plant is historical. And let me see if I can find Carol here and highlight her. There you are. I'm going to ask you to unmute, and then you will be our, our next speaker. Well, greetings from Columbus, Ohio. Um, now, different from uh, Mary, we had sun today, which is unusual this time of year, but it was not 65 degrees. <laughs> we had snow this morning. Um, let's see, historical committee meets every first Monday of the month. We are a very congenial bunch. And we're having quite a, quite a lot of fun with these things that we're dreaming up to, to think about. Um, we have had some losses this year. We lost Jackie Smith Miller and more recently, Jim Savicki. And uh, that's been very, very, um, it, both were very involved in everything we're doing. And so they, they are, are greatly missed. Um, but Cindy Wilson has joined us and, and is serving as liaison, besides just being interested in history, is serving as liaison to social justice. And since we have an interest in both black history and uh, indigenous history, that, that's working out uh, uh, 
tremendously well. And we're very happy to have her join us and anybody else too who's interested. Um, the things that we, the thing that I, I would like to bring up among others is we started off on uh, the old brochure wanting to redo that. That was actually a plan for last year and we didn't quite get around to getting it printed. And we stopped thinking about it because why print a, a brochure when the sanctuary is going to be closed? Um, so we are, that, that has opened up some time for us to, to think about this project. And as it's gone along, it's been interesting to see how it's evolved because we, we had a very limited idea about what we wanted to do. And we've gone from thinking about the text of the brochure to the sign out front, the his, there, uh, we had a historical sign out front, which is now uh, tucked safely behind the Hearst House and has, uh, has uh, information on it. And you know what? What do we want to do about that? And right now we don't know. We're we're still uh, thinking about uh, what we want to put out and and where. Not back on the road because you, uh, road signs just don't exist anymore. We would need a, a commemorative marker of some sort. Um, then we started really thinking about how we wanted to present ourselves to um, our history uh, and. Eventually, our last meeting, it occurred to us, we really should be starting with the online text because that's where people go, number one. Number two, if we've got that one under control, then, then we can use the text that we've come up with uh, for other purposes, whether for a brochure or a sign. Um, we're keeping Kate in the loop on this so she can help us figure out whenever we get to the point where we're actually ready to produce something. Um, she, she can help us figure out. Um, Carol, here. 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 Keep, I, yes, okay. And uh, one last thing I'd, I'd like to mention is uh, Jim Savicki uh, redid uh, the display case in the vestibule, and there is now a light that turns on on a sensor. So whenever we get back into the church, every time you pass by that display case, think about Jim. All right. Excellent. Um, thank you very much. I think one important thing about this meeting is how different committees can interact with each other. So I'm very excited to hear that the historical is working so closely with social justice. It's really important and a you know, good aspect of committee work together. So thank you very much. Um, you know, I was reminded that we do have the nominating committee that doesn't fit under any of the uh, liaisons, but I hear from the chat that there's nothing to report. I'm sure they'll have plenty to report once they set down to their work in the spring. Um, let's slide over then to uh, Sally DeLisa, who is the Sunday morning liaison and go to worship music. Now, did, did, did I see Michael Gardner? I'm not sure I did. Michael, are you here? I am. Ah, okay. Well, then you have the floor. Okay. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, love the mustache. Thank you. Well, it's not really a mustache. I just sort of stopped shaving part of my face. That's all. Uh, so we have uh, mostly a response to this uh, amazing challenge that we're all facing. And so uh, working uh, hand in hand with Catherine, we're trying to be as flexible as we can to find forms of worship that uh, work for everyone. Um, we did the Eventide uh, in person this fall. Uh, attendance kind of flagged for, uh, I think, understandable reasons. So uh, Catherine has uh, switched to an even song, with the first of which will be tomorrow night. I think that will be like the even tides, except it will be done by Zoom, but it will be done from the sanctuary. So Edwin will be able to play both the organ and the high quality piano for that um, informal services uh, and uh, encourage any of you who are interested uh, to please join. And if you're not interested, at least check it out and see what, what's happening. Uh, another big initiative this year was a, a working group on diverse music was, uh, was formed, I think, 
I think chaired by Mary Flanagan, um, or at least she, she had a big role in it. Uh, they made a recommend, set of recommendations, which the governing board uh, approved. And uh, the worship music committee now is shepherding a, another uh, task force uh, on that um, led by uh, Carol Robison. And um, we will uh, try to feature at least once a month uh, some form of non-traditional music uh, as part of the services. Um, uh, looks like we're going to be uh, virtual th through June. Um, we'll see if there are any breaks in the weather which allow so for some flexibility there and the possibility of some other combination in person and Zoom service, but that kind of remains to be seen by the science and the statistics. The other thing, since I've got the floor, I will mention uh, is the, the pastoral care team. There are 10 of us who uh, try to maintain regular or semi-regular contact with uh, shut-ins, those who are in institutional settings, who live alone, who for some reason um, are not particularly connected to the church right now through either something like a small group or a committee which is working actively. Uh, right now that's a little over 100 people that we try to keep in contact with by phone calls and uh, cards and emails and uh, just general check-ins. It's been, I think, very rewarding for those of us uh, who've been doing it. And uh, over and over again, we're just reminded, uh, as hard as it is for all of us, for, for those who are really living alone uh, and don't have good access to family, it is so hard. So that's the work we're doing. Thanks. Michael, thank you very much. Um, the next year would be religious education. And I think I see Alexa here. Let me just see if I can spot her. Ah, there you are. Okay, so you're good. You've got the floor. Um, awesome, yeah. So um, religious education has been going really well this year. Um, we have a couple things that we just wanted to highlight. Um, one that I think is really exciting for all of us is the youth group has been meeting regularly. Um, they were, you know, social distance and outside for as much of the fall and I think occasionally now still and then doing some virtual stuff but led by um, Michaela and Kate and I hear just rave reviews everybody's very engaged the group of teens is just loving the connection that they're able to build there. Um, so that's been really exciting because the youth group has been something that um, has, I think, struggled for a couple of years, just, um, you know, getting smaller and smaller, but they, um, they're having a really good year so far. So that's really exciting. Um, the, um, Kate's been putting together monthly, um, monthly bags for, for the um, church school families that include um, topics or sort of activities and um, conversation topics and that kind of thing that go along with the theme of the month. Um, and I think, uh, you know, my kids and, and from what we've heard, the kids are all really enjoying, um, you know, the craft projects that they get and the activities that are in those bags. And it's just a nice link to the church. Um, we've had, we, the pageant, I think went really well. I know it was a little bit different, um, but it was um, really nice to see sort of the multi-gen aspect of the pageant come together. Um, and so that was definitely a labor of love um, and it took some effort to get it sort of to work, but it, I think went off really well. Um, so that was, that was a big piece of our winter. Um, we have a children's chapel coming up this week um, just to get the kids on Zoom together um, so that they can sort of see each other. Um, we had done a couple of socially distanced, you know, outside like playground type things in the fall, but they haven't really seen each other in their little small group um, for a couple of months. And so we're gonna do a children's chapel um, and let me see if there's anything else that we wanted to highlight. Um, oh, and then, so the other sort of thing that we're, that's in the works is trying to get a couple of, um, again, sort of multi-gen workshops. So Jim, um, is doing a drawing workshop coming up. 
Um, we have a couple of other um, ideas, you know, that we're working on, um, but just ways to get people together. Um, you know, we've thought about how we might be able to do bingo. So things like that. We're just trying to get, you know, some of that, um, you know, fun and, and multi-generational um, activity going. So, um, but yeah, we've had a, a very good year so far. Excellent. So glad to hear it. Um, we will move on next to membership. And Joy, I see you here. Um, are you, uh, yep, I'm going to just make sure you're unmuted and then you have the floor. Joy, are you there? I, th I thought I thought we you had you. To, you need to unmute. I don't do that any better than my five-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> All right. So membership has um, been discussing a few different things um, in the last uh, number of months. Um, one of the first things we did is we've been re reviewing a, um, and discussing a survey put out by the UUA um, called Assessing Your Hospitality. And it's designed to help congregations look at their strengths and their weaknesses um, in different areas. Um, and some of the topics within that survey are things like, will they come? And you, you rate your, your um, the different categories. Um, like uh, visibility and signage and are you a presence in your local newspaper and um, what does your website look like and like I said you rate them one to ten and you sort of see where your weaknesses are and your strengths and whatever so um, one of the other subjects is you know will they come back and you um, look at your greeters and how they and how well you follow up with people after they've been there for the one or two times and um, how you handle families with young children and um, reviewing your Sunday sermons and services and uh, making sure you meet the needs of the uh, RE program and that sort of thing. So that's sort of an ongoing thing, but we started it and it's been really an interesting process. So we'll keep up with that, I'm sure. Um, if Kate says we're going to, <laughs> Kate was the one that introduced us to this survey. So anyway, um, the second thing we're working on is um, the new and improved membership table at coffee hour. Um, Pam Blades and I were um, put to this task before COVID and then we kind of dropped it when we all went underground. Um, so we're resurrecting that and, um, you know, we've, tr you know, trying to, we've had a lot of discussions about why people come to church um, and, you know, what kinds of things they're looking for and how do we get the message out to them about all the interesting things and enlightening things we do and, you know, our social justice work and whatever the thing is that might draw somebody to church, you know, how do we get that message out to people? Um, and we want to, um, make sure that we have good materials for them to take with them so that we, they have everything they need um, when they leave church. And um, in conjunction with that, we're all together starting to um, draw together materials and ideas to, to create a brand new welcome packet that will be given out at the beautiful table that we're going to um, adorn with a beautiful poster and all that sort of stuff. So just getting that whole, um, you know, presence up and running before we go back into live getting together. Um, the only, only other thing we did talk about, we have talked about a little bit is that a new to UU program that we offer. Um, and as a committee, we talked a, a bit about how we feel that maybe it's something that we could offer to the whole congregation that even though there are people there in church um, that have been there for a while, they still might value, you know, that program and what they might learn from it. Um, so in that case, we might change the name of it instead of new to UU, it could be just all about UU or something like that. But anyway, so that's pretty Sounds much what we've, what we've been up to. That's very good. It's excellent. And I suggest that if people want to, you know, mention something in the comments, whether they'd want to attend, uh, you know, all about UU or something like that, or get in touch with Joy about that, that would be great. Um, let me see, Gail, you're up next in terms of flower committee. And I think I've just done, well, there we go. I think you're unmuted and we'll go yep. to you. I'll be, I'll be really quick. Um, 
we we had you know our our big meeting in the fall. Um, we've been really trying to get the assignments done for both Sunday service and you know even tide. I think what's been a little bit confusing for us as a committee is really trying to decide: Do you do flowers for both both of those services, and how do we get those things covered? Um, so that's been a little bit of a challenge this year with COVID, and sometimes we had two even tide times, and sometimes we had um, uh, none. So so we're working on that. Uh, usually, Lenore um, helped us with that uh, communication. Um, I ca we got to get it out there more that um, you know flowers um, are are needed just for the beauty of that service. Um, they're still needed even in Zoom format. I think people really love seeing them, and um, also just to remember that flowers are used for a memorial as well, and to remember that that's a really big piece of this in our community. Um, and so, you know, it's always a challenge to find volunteers to do flowers, but each person is taking on mm -hmm. that task and we're trying other ways to try to get it done very simply and at low cost. So that's it. Excellent, thank you, Gail. Um, anybody interested in doing flowers some week, you know who to get in touch with, right? Um, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Gail. So that wraps us up on Sally DeLisa, who is the Sunday morning liaison in her group. Now, by my count, if everybody sticks to pretty close to two or three minutes, we can wrap this up before 8.30, and that will be my intent. So please try and keep your, yourself as uh, concise as possible. And we will move to Pat Slecta's um, liaison group, which is um, the finance folks. And let me see, uh, Heidi, do you wanna talk to the finance committee? Cause I see you, I don't see um, Nancy Langren. Are you, where, where are you, Julia? Do you wanna take, I'm sorry, not Julia. We didn't, we don't have Heidi then either. All right, um, Pat, is there anything you wanna say in regard to finance or should we just move on? I think we can just move on. All right, let's move to trustees. We know we have Lynn here. Lynn? All right, you know, all one right thing, then, one I'm thing, unmuted. You, you are I unmuted. Anticipate. So the trustees are in charge with and, uh, and seeing that our funds are invested well and I'm proud to report that we have over $4.4 million as of today in trust money. Uh, so if you have ideas, we can help. The other thing the trustees are working on are the scholarships. Uh, I Looking around the gallery, I don't see a whole lot of people with seniors who are eligible for the means scholarship, but uh, it's a reminder to Kate that she should get in touch with Michaela and let them know that the means scholarship is available for graduating seniors. And while I'm looking at Kate, um, we also have to get together on the money rec monies received for the Jackie Smith Miller uh, Religious Education Fund that we need to talk about. So sometime I've got to kind of get the trustees together with Kate and we'll start working better on that. Uh, that's it. Lynn, I wanted to thank you for putting together the document that you had on the trusts, which I'm sharing with the board and we'll look, look that over. But the point that I'd like to make to everybody on this meeting today is that you may have money in your budget, your annual budget for the year, okay, but you may have ideas for other things you wanna do. Keep in mind that there are other sources of money within the church. The trusts are one that may be for a purpose that are, lines up with what you want to do, or there may be cell funds that would be available for that. So it's not like it's a non-starter. If you don't find it in your budget, you may find that you have an opportunity um, elsewhere to be able to, uh, to find some of that money. So anyway, thank you very much, Lynn. We'll go next to... Um, let me see, Nancy or Tracy, who wants to take uh, on stewardship? I, I will take it. All right, very good. Um, it's Nancy. Um, All right, Nancy. We actually met today and we've changed when we're doing the stewardship campaign um, this year. We're, we're doing it on, um, sun, we're starting it on, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday, April 11th. We decided to move it up because um, I think we all had a bit of um, COVID inertia and we're kind of stuck. And that's part of it. And also wanted to move to 
kind of a warmer, sunnier, more hopeful time, thought that might be helpful um, with it. Um, the name of our campaign this year is Commit to the Future. Um, we really want to emphasize um, positive things, what we've got, not what we didn't have. Um, all the good things that, that we were able to get through COVID. So move it to a very positive kind of thing, which I think believe is where we've gone in the past few years to be very positive and fun. And um, we're gonna be challenged to get fun with Zoom, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, so that's, that's the um, April 11th. We've already received one pledge for next year though. So we've already actually started, um, which is a nice thing. Um, one, one of the things that happens every year is we usually, we almost always have the governing board and the stewardship committee pledge early so that we come into stewardship Sunday um, with already some pledges. Um, it's, it's sort of a good way to start. Um, and, and that, you know, I think we're gonna continue that this year. We might also ask to bring in um, chairs of committees because you guys, we all are leaders of the church and so, um, it might be good to get the leaders of the church all out there early. Um, and also, if people with their committees can be involved in just encouraging people um, and reminding people that um, the pledge happens. Oh, yes, and the big thing, we are no longer going to call it the stewardship drive because it confuses people. So it's now going to be called the pledge drive. And I'm sure some of us who've been around for too long are going to be slipping up, but we will still, we still are the stewardship committee because we do other things. You did get the Christmas ornament um, besides just doing pledges. So, um, so stewardship does apply, but we're, it's now called the pledge drive because what is it? It's a pledge drive. <laughs> so hopefully we'll, 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 we will, we're not asking for any increases. You know, um, we might talk about the, you know, we will talk about certainly the budget being less without the fundraisers, but um, we're not pushing big. We, we pushed big last year and people pledged amazing last year, even throughout COVID. Um, and there's much that we have to be grateful for and, I, and pledges are coming in. So um, we really have a good committed community here at First Parish, which is good. So, so that's all. Hey Nancy, could you repeat the theme? Commit to the future. All right, let's all commit to the future. That sounds great. All right, so we're going to go to audit then. And I think, John, do you want to speak to um, the audit committee? Yeah, okay. Um, so um, audit, um, uh, almost all of our work normally uh, happens uh, uh, between the uh, end of the fiscal year, uh, end of June, and, uh, the, um, and the financial meeting in September. Uh, our job is to review the finances uh, uh, basically on behalf of the board and uh, to make sure that the, uh, we believe the treasurers are doing a good job. And we do believe the treasurers are doing a good job. Uh, for the first time in uh, three years, this year we were able to do a complete, well, by our view, complete uh, informal review of the finances uh, we straightened out a number of problems that uh, unclarities that had existed with changes we had made in how we were handling the cell funds and that didn't really get translated down to what exact amounts of money were to go in which exact funds. Um, Lynn especially and also Amy Hamilton uh, were uh, very patient with us and uh, we really appreciate their their detail and their perseverance and their their accuracy and we got, uh, I believe all of those questions resolved and we're able to uh, feel that, that we're handling that money the way the parish intended it to be. So thanks again to the, uh, to the treasurers there. Um, the only other thing I will say is that this is a very esoteric committee and there are only two of us. There's myself and Barbara Balboni, uh, and thank heaven for Barbara, uh, who really uh, uh, does a wonderful job with spreadsheets and that sort of thing. But we desperately need a third member. And this is a plea to the nominating committee. Um, I'm, 
especially hopeful that maybe there, uh, the problem is that practically everybody who knows about the church finances is involved in one of the committees that handles the money, or they're a treasurer, or they're a trustee, or they're on the finance committee, and they can't be any of those things and also be on the audit committee because we have to be independent from them. So I'm just hoping that maybe there are some people in the, maybe the what I think of as the younger generation, that would be people like who are maybe 50, uh, who, um, who have some financial knowledge or, or interest or expertise that aren't presently involved in uh, church finances. We really need to yeah, ch teach some new people how to do this and we need, we need more help basically because there are some of the things we ought to be doing that we're just putting aside. So yeah, you, please yep. nominating, if you can help us, please. Thank you. All right, John, thank you very much. Um, let me see, so that wraps up the finance uh, uh, liaison group. Um, I do wanna mention that there's a side discussion going on in the chat, so you should pay attention to that. I know that Michael had a couple of other thank yous he wanted to mention in there. So uh, if you're not seeing the chat, you should probably have a look at that as well. But let's move on right now to the service liaison, uh, who is Caroline Mitchell, and she's unable to be with us tonight, uh, but we will uh, shoot through that group. Um, and Carl, I think you would be first on board for, um, for the personnel committee. Yeah, so we haven't really uh, done much here in the personnel committee for this year so far, uh, things being kind of a little quiet with uh, the COVID stuff and so forth. Uh, so there's not really a lot to report at the moment. That's, you know, quick reports are fine with me. I have no issue with that at all. <laughs> As, I mean, as long as everything is going on, you guys have a full committee. There and, are no crises and, at the moment. <laughs> and, there's, and then that, then that's great. Uh, David Murphy, do you want to pick up on committee on ministry then? Sure. I was hoping I could beat Pat Schlechta in her brief report. <laughs> uh, essentially, uh, there have been no issues and it's been nice chatting with people. And we, you know, there are no issues. So uh, there's not a whole lot of work that we're doing at this point. All right. Well, and the group, it's important for the group to be in place and thank you for your commitment to that. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. We'll move to DRE relations. That's a group that I don't have anybody um, on the org chart with. And I know there was some discussion around that. Actually, Kate, do you, is there anything you wanted to say to that point? If you're still on mute. Not really. I mean, we, I think three people were chosen last year and we never convened and it just hasn't happened. Nothing's happened. So okay. it's like, I don't know where it is. I think it's nowhere. So is that a problem? Uh, not at the moment, but I think in general, just for good process, it's good to have something in place just in case, you know, you don't want something like that in place after the fact. So well, well, my, um, my question for an action item is, could those three people get together and identify a chair so I can at least have someone on the, the chart here? So last year, I think it was David Murphy, uh, Kathy Bray, and Marilyn Chrisman, I believe. All right. Well, I think they need to have um, a game of uh, rock, paper, scissors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, oh, we will move on then. Uh, speaking of Kathy Bray, the Karen connection, do you want to say a few words to that, Kathy? Uh, sure. Um, well, we take good care of each other at First Parish. We, um, I wasn't sure during COVID whether we get a lot of requests, but we, we actually have, and we provided a lot of meals <clears throat> over the past year. Um, and we have a great group of people to call upon when something does come up. So I'm glad that people are reaching out to us when they see a need. Um, and I just wanted to comment that Donna Savicki, because we made a lot of meals for the Savickis, and she said that not only did it feed them, but it really helped them so much with their morale and that um, knowing that people, that the church was there for them was meant so much to them. So. For me, it was a rewarding. It's a very rewarding committee to work on, and and I have a great group of committee members. So that's about it. Cool. Thank you, and thank you for the work you do. Uh, let me see. Fellowship is uh, Julie Lillis. 
Patchouli. Do you, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you go. Looks like you're that. unmuted. You're good now. Um, you know, I volunteered to help in 2019. I wasn't even sure if I'm chair. I had to call Heidi Connor today. I thought maybe she was chair. I don't know. I, I will just have to find a roster of who's on our team. And um, I've done this before. And I'll look forward to when we reconvene and work on policy and procedures and everything. Get everything written down. Julie, I can send you one of the documents from the last meeting was the nominating committees um, document. Mm -hmm. And that would have the list of members of your committee. So I'll take an action, uh, Julie, to send that to you. Um, I mean, if others would like that, I can include that with a budget that I send around as well. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Um, I'm just taking a quick note, but it looks like small group ministry is next and that would be Cindy. Yeah, hi. Um, small group ministry is actually um, alive and running and, um, and doing good work um, during COVID. We've actually even added a few new members to groups and that's even on Zoom, it's been really positive. If you or anybody you know, if you think of anybody that would benefit from a small group, just uh, give me a call or send me an email, uh, text me, whatever. And um, you know, we're we're um, really working with uh, with that to, to, to add people um, to groups now that we think is maybe especially in COVID would would benefit from from that type of connection. That's it. Cool. Thank you very much. So that wraps up the service liaison, folks. Let's go to outreach. That's Liz Connor's group. And we start with social justice. Eleanor and Mark, if you want to tag team this, you're welcome to, or uh, one or the other, who would like to take that? We're, we're going to do it together as we bumble through everything. Mark and I uh, have such a great group of uh, social justice uh, committee members that we just think it's uh, they're leading us rather than the other way around. But let me just give you a, a start out with a heads up of some of the important things that we're doing right now. Um, and I think food insecurity um, has always been um, an issue out there and it's worse of course during um, this whole era of COVID. But um, after over 20 years, the Box Project uh, under Carrie continues and they've made lots of adjustments so that now individual families, they have individual drivers, but she has continued um, keeping that going with volunteers and with donations, as you know, from the whole congregation. So that's been wonderful. Um, Father Bills um, is no longer, because of COVID, doing it directly with the making of the food and the casseroles. So um, as you see in the um, bell ringer, we're recommending that if you, if you would have bought the ingredients to make something, whether it's $5 or $10 or whatever, if you can just send a, a, you know, checks to the church. So they've kind of morphed that into another way to get money to that group so that they can do it in a style of, that is uh, more COVID conscious and in a different way than having direct contact. And of course, another new project that's gone along is, um, uh, Bob Hughes and uh, Donna Savicki are coordinating a new kind of um, weekly luncheon program down in Plymouth. So um, it started out, I think, with the social justice people kind of supporting making those lunches and trying to get that out to the whole congregation so that they're dealing with a number of ways to deal with the food insecurity issues. Um, the three Cindy's, I would say, have morphed off Cindy Wilson, Cindy uh, Ladrini, and uh, Cindy Simmons are all doing the racial justice uh, working group, which isn't isn't really under social justice anymore. It's just become a whole um, a whole piece of the whole church, and we're all very pleased about that. Um, Cindy uh, Ladrini and Sally Delisa, of course, are working on environmental things. Um, and including the book, they have a book discussion going on with that, The Future We Choose. And I was going to say yada, yada, yada. There's so many other things that that, <laughs> that group is just working so hard and getting the whole church involved in it. And Mark and I are loving it. Mark, if you can think of anything else. Jump uh, just that they're looking for a chair for the environmental effort at this point. So if anyone's interested in doing that and has uh, doesn't have a chair already, uh, 
then that would be, you, you could contact us or Cindy. And um, I guess that's, oh, we did welcome Donna back. Right. Um, and of course that just about, she's one person, but that about doubles the, uh, the intensity of, of the meetings. It was, it was great to have her back. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's good news. Um, she is she is a powerful force. Um, let me see. So thank you very much there. Um, next within the outreach group would be Partner Church. Jerry, did you want to take that one? Uh, huh. Uh, we we heard you at first and then we lost you. So you got to unmute. It looks like you're unmuted I now. now. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, we've been pretty active in the partner church time. We've continued having regular communication with uh, our friends in Transylvania, and they're under a lot of uh, stress with the COVID as well as we are. Uh, we're doing some interesting projects with them. Uh, we have a uh, just started a pen pal program where we, I guess, uh, Kaylee McKechnie is uh, me meeting with uh, young woman in uh, Transylvania, and we're hoping to get more of that. The, some of the kids hopefully will be uh, involved in, uh, in doing that, as well as uh, we're trying to provide pictures uh, in our bell ringer and, and uh, distro uh, about Transylvania and information and history so that people are more aware of what you know, the partner church uh, relationship is really about. That's pretty much it. Good, excellent. It's always interesting to see Zillard uh, appearing on Facebook. Um, yeah. And I understand he sat in on a couple of church services. So that's yes, great. He yes, he did. All right, let's move on to welcoming congregation. Mary, do you wanna take that? Sure. Um, so, you know, we are tasked with being, um, helping our church be open and welcoming to the LGBTQ plus community. And we are still active during COVID. Um, look at the end of March for a fascinating Sunday service by C.B. Beal. She, um, they are a wonderful speaker. So I think we're really gonna enjoy that. And keep open and keep some space in your reading um, plans for the spring um, as part of the reading group. We're going to be uh, introducing the book Redefining Realness, which is by Janet Mock. It's a compelling memoir of this kid growing up, a uh, kid of color, low income, struggling with some abuse, who's also transgender. It's riveting. It, it, it was a wonderful page turner. Um, that's it. Excellent. Well, we will look forward to that. Thank you. Um, Tracy, I think uh, you would be next for communications. You want to take that one on? Yep. Um, there's a lot of communication going on. <laughs> Kate and I are uh, have been very busy sort of meeting weekly to clean up the website. Um, I'm grateful that we have an in-house photographer, which makes a giant difference in the quality of um, communications we can put out. We are obsessed with a couple of new tools that we'll be introducing in the next couple of weeks, first through stewardship and then maybe some other places. Um, we did a survey in the beginning of the year. Emily's our other, it's me, Kate, and Emily at the moment. Um, and what else, if I'm forgetting anything, Kate, it's plugging along. There's an enormous amount of support work that, that gets done and we probably could be doing more. Um, we certainly will be looking to Ted and the front office technology to help us and to the board for resources. <laughs> yep. Can I tell you? Uh, yep. And, and kudos to your work, particularly, I would say, in mm -hmm. making the website the one-stop shopping place. Um, you're looking for the link to Sunday service? Go to uudux.org. You're looking for what whatever the Eventide link is, uh, some event, the book club. Uh, ultimately, so much is there. And actually, just this week, Kate has helped get the, on the committee um, 
page, the, the org chart that not exactly the one that I showed you because I didn't want to put everybody's you know, name, phone number, and email address up on there, um, but one that doesn't have contact information so that people in the church can say, oh, okay, that's who's the chair of the flower committee. That's who I need to talk to. So that's good. And, and so congratulations on that. I mean, communications is uh, just a huge undertaking, but uh, it's so gratifying to see uh, such progress being made. So um, let me see. So uh, uh, one last point, you wanna say anything, Tracy? No, okay. All right. Well. Uh, I, I'm afraid I've rushed you all through, but I promise to be done by 8.30, and I thank you all for doing that. I would like to say, though, that if there is a point that someone likes to make, like maybe Nancy does, just show me your hand, and we'll have a couple of things before um, before we close. Nancy, did you want to say something? Nancy Ovasco? Um, I wanted to talk for the, <clears throat> the Alliance and Affiliate Group. Yeah, um, you know, that I, that's, that's excellent. I didn't, you know, I didn't plan to go through all of them, but since we have some time, let's do that. Okay. Um, as you know, the parlor, um, um, Dorothy Pilo is our designer. Um, Joyce Joy was an amazing help in getting the furniture. All the furniture is um, going to be amazing. Very good quality, long lasting. It's going to turn into a really comfortable room to sit in. Um, and the chairs that the tippy chairs will be gone. Um, it's going to be absolutely Beautiful and but very usable. It's not meant to be a formal parlor that you shouldn't feel that children are not allowed in it. it you know, we're trying to make everything pretty childproof. So um, that's been been really good. People worked really hard on on selections and that. So they'll hopefully be here soon. Um, in terms of the alliance, um, losing Jackie was a big loss. I mean, Jackie was the sewing group. Um, I attended, but let me tell you, I can't run a sewing group. So um, a lot of things have to be reimagined with the Alliance, but it's not the time when we're all back in church. I think it's it's time. The Alliance, um, I think it needs to be redefined. It hasn't been, it hasn't updated over the years like most things do. So I think it's, it's it'll seem like a revolutionary change, but um, if we want to keep that long going historic group, we need to reimagine it and, and that combines all ages and, and, and youthifies it a little too. So, um, but it's a great, it's, it's been a great group and I think it does serve a really big purpose and we just have to purpose it now for, for these generations. So that's all. Oh, thank you, Nancy. And thank you so much to the Alliance because, you know, so much of the, um, the thought and, and funding and, uh, you know, Making that happen is, is thanks to the Alliance. Um, and it looks great. And you can even just go in there and smell the new paint. It just, it smells great. That's true. Uh, let me see. Now, I don't want to skip over any affiliated group or working group if anybody wanted to, to speak to that. I see Cindy with her hand up. Yeah, I was hoping that maybe Sharon could bring us up to date on um, safe congregations and the growth team. Sharon, are you ready to do that? Sharon, where are you? Oh, no. Well, we've lost her picture. There we go. She's coming back. I'm going to ask you to unmute. And it looks like she's almost unmuting. Oh, she's trying so hard. She's turning her video on and off. Come on, Sharon, you can do it. Uh, one more ask to unmute, maybe it'll work. OK. Oh, there she goes. Back. Now she's muted again. Oh, now she's muted again. Oh, there we go. I think we're good now. Let's see if it stays. It didn't last time. Okay, safe congregation. I'll be very quick. Um, probably the hardest working committee in church right now. We meet every other week. Oh, those um, fighting words, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we meet regularly. Uh, working on protocol. We're trying to... Um, how, how are we going to manage we, on even tide in the Christmas service? And um, we do have a little bit of usage in the building. So we've been working on all of that. And then we had the little COVID scare there. We had to deal with that. Um, so anyway, we've been, we've been very busy. We met, we met today, but um, so we meet every other Tuesday um, and we probably will be until this is all over. And the uh, growth team at the beginning of this church year, we decided it wasn't much 
use and trying to work on growth considering the circumstances. So our goal was to retain everyone that we had. Um, and we can start looking at growth next year, but it's not a good way to grow when you're just doing Zoom. But we are uh, sponsoring the um, community read that was gonna be coming up next Wednesday, the 27th, The Future We Choose. Um, if you haven't read the book, I actually read it and I found it quite inspiring. I'm ready to put solar panels on my car, my house and buy an electric car. Uh, so um, it's it's a good read. So that's what we've been working on, uh, things like that. So, but we are functioning somewhat. Excellent. So that's it. All right. Let me go back to gallery view just to see if there is a uh, working group or other or organization that would like to speak. I do not see any hands. I'm, you know, it, it wasn't my intent here to have the the board uh, necessarily speak. I've been including, um, you know, monthly updates from the board meetings in the the uh, the bell ringer. So I think you're probably pretty good with that. There are two quick things I want to mention, and maybe Cindy will have another thing to wrap up. Um, there is a pandemic uh, fundraising working group that that I am on along with Tracy, uh, Jay Bray, um, Sharon, and Pat Schlechta. And we're looking at doing a midwinter fundraiser perhaps as soon as the end of February. Um, we'll get that approved, I hope, at the upcoming board meeting. But keep an eye out. It's likely to be another virtual auction this time around, some kind of creativity. So, so keep that in mind. Another thing that the board had set up before uh, COVID times came along was the Envisioning the Sanctuary in the 21st Century uh, Working Group, which was to look at the nature of our sanctuary, including the historic tablets, and to go through a you know a year and a half process with a consultant to uh, work through you know what we wanted the vision of the sanctuary to be, and we are um, we do have a consultant set, uh, who is willing to do that work. We're just looking for the right funds to be able to do that. So don't be surprised if in the next little bit you see some uh, you know some news about that and I know some of you are actually on that uh, that committee um, that would wrap it up for me Cindy uh, why don't you unmute yourself and uh, yeah I'll just uh, wrap it up by saying um, again thank you all for coming I really really appreciate everybody's input and the opportunity to find out what's going on in different committees I mean, and I also wanted to add is, as as um, Eleanor said, I'm involved with a number of other people in the racial justice working group and, and in trying to get an environmental group going. Both groups are open and welcoming to whomever might want to join us. Um, as you heard a little bit, the historical um, committee is also working with a racial justice um, committee. I, we're hoping that all um, committees will start looking at the things they do through that sort of lens, the sort of a, a, a racial justice lens and an environmental lens uh, for those two things. So when you're making your decisions, you know, just think about, you know, how does it affect these, these two initiatives that are going on in the church and the wider world. So um, again, thank you so much for coming. Um, you know, we, Jim certainly is always available. I'm always available. Um, so let us know if we can do anything for you. Good night. Excellent. Good night. So I think we're good. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Governing Board. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, everybody.